So we start uh, this lesson with uh, initially with a uh, simple two period model. So we are going to consider only uh, a planning horizon that consists of uh, two periods, zero and one. And uh, we assuming there is uh, only one type of uh, non-renewable resources whose initial stock is uh, S. And uh, what we do is that we assume also in a way similar to uh, what we did the last uh, last lessons, that the society wants to um, use all the resource stock so that at the end of uh, uh, the, the second period there is uh, no uh, resource left. And uh, we call RT the quantity extracted in each of the two periods, so R1 or R2. We make a further assumptions that we consider specifically in this uh, example a uh, linear uh, inverse demand functions uh, for the resource where the, the price is linked with the quantity of the resource extracted at each of the two periods, zero and one, through two parameters A and, uh, and B. And uh, one important uh, consideration is because of the linearity assumptions we make so we have something like that here is the amount of the resource extracted and offered to the market and uh, this is the, the 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 price so we have uh, this is the demand function for for the resource and this is a because of the uh, assumption of linearity so at um, price equal to a the resource demanded is equal to zero and this again imply that at, at this price p equal to equal a, uh, there is no longer consumption and there is a resource. And this means that either the resource is non essential, we can produce our goods using something else, or a backstock technology is available that uh, at that price uh, can substitute the, the non renewable resource. Given this uh, framework. What do we as social planner want to maximize? Well, the fact that we have a demand function of price over uh, the uh, natural resource, we can interpret this demand function as the curves of the marginal benefit of the person or the economic agents involved in the market. And forget for a moment that now we are speaking uh, about uh, the gross social benefits because we are not considering uh, uh, the extraction cost. The idea is that, okay, there is a market of a good. At each moment in time, let's suppose that on the first, mo on the first period here, we have this R0 level of uh, uh, resource extraction. So we have this price here. The, um, from the point of view of the demand, the fact that the demand is like this means that here there is some, some consumer, oh, sorry, that uh, for, for him or for her, the value of uh, the resource she she or he is a, is a, is willing to pay this uh, price but it doesn't pay this price he pay only this price because this is the market price so for him this is the benefits for someone else it was uh, availability to pay is this one but it pay only this one so the benefit is this one and so so all this area is the benefits for uh, the consumers. For uh, the um, extraction firms, is the opposite. This is the uh, this is the market price. So the benefits for them, the gross benefit. Uh, this is why we are speaking about gross social benefits. Is uh, um, is uh, this area here the marginal the marginal benefit? So 
that we can interpret the area, the total area under the, the, the curve up to the equilibrium point as the uh, gross social benefit. So what we want to maximize as the social planner is exactly this one, is the social benefits deriving from the extraction and consumption of, of this resource. So what we do is that we, uh, we take the integral from zero till this level of, of a resource and uh, uh, we want to maximize uh, this benefit uh, for the two period. Again, we are speaking about uh, gross social uh, benefits uh, because the net benefits uh, will have to um, consider the, the extraction cost and we are assuming that extraction costs here are borne by the, uh, by the firm that extract the resource. We assume this cost to be uh, to be constant, so we are not uh, assuming that depend from the uh, from the stock. We are making some simplification. It doesn't. This extraction cost depends only from the uh, quantity assumed, and the marginal cost uh, uh, are are constants, and. Uh, um, the net social benefits we we'll have to consider, so the benefits, the gross benefits that we saw in the previous slides, less the cost needed to extract the resource. So, in a, graphically, it's, uh, it's equal to this area, because if this is the cost, so if you go back to what we did again, so this is the benefit for the consumers, and this and not the whole area is the benefit for the uh, production for the, for the extraction firm so when we uh, develop uh, the integral uh, considering the extraction cost we are back to this equation and uh, again, uh, the, it's not extracting the resource that general benefit. It is it, the consumptions uh, of the resource of the product that you can uh, obtain with the resource. But we are assuming uh, no uh, stocks and hence the two, uh, two concepts can be considered uh, the same. So as a, a social planner, our objective is uh, that to find uh, the share of extraction of the natural resources between these two periods that maximize, that are the uh, socially optimal ones. And uh, again, what we need now is uh, still uh, 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 social welfare functions uh, that embodies the society uh, objective and in particular uh, what we can use is a, a, a utilitarian uh, form of welfare that in general will depend from the utilities of the two periods uh, and in particular we can consider one where the two uh, utilities are uh, um, discounted uh, levels of utilities of the two periods. So what you could see here is that here is a one plus uh, rho raised to zero and here is raised to one. Uh, where rho is the social utility discount rate. Uh, for the reasons that we discussed in the previous uh, slide we can uh, uh, consider as utility the net social benefits from uh, uh, from uh, uh, the uh, consumption of the from the extraction of the resource we are back to a, a constrained maximization problem where we want to maximize the the welfare uh, subject to the complete uh, extraction of the resource. So uh, we can uh, compute, uh, we can write the Lagrangian of uh, this, uh, this problem. So here we substitute uh, welfare with its formulations, 
in terms of not social benefits. And here we substitute the net social benefits with, uh, uh, with the equation we got from uh, the integral of the demand function. So this is for the period zero and this is for the period, uh, for the period one. Uh, we then take the uh, first order conditions to maximize uh, the constrained problem. We take the first order conditions with respect to the two level of extractions and the Lagrangians, and uh, we solve uh, uh, this system. In particular, we see that both this one and this one must be equal uh, uh, to themselves and equal to the uh, Lagrangian multiplier. So when we uh, uh, set, so th this uh, uh, quantity must be equal to this one from the first order conditions. And we can now consider the uh, demand equations. This is valid in general, so it is valid both at time zero and at time one. So we can replace this quantity for, uh, for the price. Uh, and uh, we end up with, uh, with these uh, equations that we can rewrite in this, uh, in this way. What is this? Well, we can just change the notation to make it a little bit more clear with P1 equal to Pt and uh, P0 equal to Pt minus one. And what is this? Well, this is nothing else than uh, in uh, discrete time, what we got uh, in the previous lessons in uh, uh, continuous time. So the grow rate of uh, what is this, the net price, and this is the important bit. So it is the net price that uh, would have for an efficient extraction of the resource uh, grow at a rate equal to the social uh, discount rate. So for example, if this is uh, 0 0.10, the net price should uh, also grow at a rate uh, of 10%. Uh,